Um, and, and in this hour, I want to get into Ron DeSantis, and, and they just changed the way that they're calculating COVID deaths down in Florida. So the Miami Herald headline, Florida changed its COVID data, creating an artificial decline in recent deaths. It's getting weird in Florida. We'll get to that in just a moment. But right now on the line with us is Dr. Eric Feigelding. He is the uh, formerly a faculty member and researcher at the Harvard Medical School at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, currently an adjunct senior fellow with the American Federation of Scientists. He is an epidemiologist and health economist. Uh, I follow him on Twitter, Dr. Eric Ding, E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G, D-R-E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G, uh, or F.A. Scientists and uh, FAS.org, the website. Dr. Feigelding, welcome back to the program. Um, first of all, Thank you. B before we get any farther, I, I, I mentioned to, the, to you on the phone off the air that um, there is this uh, National Institutes of Health, NIH.gov link. And it's, a, it's a place where they publish publications that seems to say Ivermectin is wonderful stuff and it'll save the world from COVID. And, and I've got people emailing this to me. I'm getting it in Twitter. I'm, I'm seeing it on Facebook all over the place. Yeah. Um, I've, I sent you the link. What the, what, what the hell is going on here with this? Forgive my obscenity. Yeah, that's a very good question. So first of all, <laughs> the NIH website years ago for open access purposes, double archives uh, many journals. And these journals are either famous journals or no name obscure journals that normally you would never see in the medical literature. And so what people are seeing is this duplicate archive of this other American Journal of Therapeutics, which I've never heard of, um, publication. And that's what they're seeing. It's not like a NIH study. It's not NIH endorsed. It's just a duplicate archive for open free access purposes that the government instituted years ago. Um, but it also the problem with the meta-analysis is, A, it doesn't include the largest, um, <laughs> newest uh, randomized trial, I would call the Together Again trial, and it includes one of the fraudulent studies, the El Ghazar study from Egypt, which found like basically 90% efficacy, which by the way, in the world of drugs, nothing is 90% efficacy. Only vaccines are, and the vaccine's not exactly like a traditional drug. So it includes that, um, basically, some people are saying outright fraudulent study. You can go read about it um, if you read and search the El Ghazar fraudulent study. And they included that study. So if you include that fraudulent study, of course, it swings it uh, down uh, to the beneficial range. And they excluded the larger study, the Together Again study, which found absolutely no effect. Which, again, one of the largest uh, trials ever. And just so you know, in, that, in the other studies, they also found like some benefits for some of the other drugs, but not ivermectin. So there's not some systematic reason <laughs> that, there, um, that these uh, results are finding a null result. It really is a null result for ivermectin. So this is, this is like a hustle. I mean, you know, they, they say right out, r right at the beginning, we did a meta-analysis of other studies, but then they don't go on to say, you know, one of those studies didn't show any result for ivermectin, and the other one that did, that we are now citing all the details of, has been withdrawn because it was full, because it was fully fraudulent, and the entire world has disavowed it. They failed to disclose any of that, and then they drew all these wonderful conclusions, and, and because this got cloned onto the NIH site, it's all over the internet. Yeah, to some degree, it got cloned on the NIH, and, and people are misled because they don't understand how these uh, medical research database works. But, uh, you know, the, the meta-analysis reviews what was published at the time. So at the time, it included the El Ghazar, which has since uh, mo most of the scientific community has completely disavowed it. I'm not sure if it's fully retracted yet, but it's been disavowed mm -hmm. and been debunked by many sources. Um, and the newer study, which happened after they published, wasn't included. Right. So, first of all, science updates, you know. Yeah. We, we know that there's asymptomatic transmission, you need masks, that the virus is airborne, all these things that, you know, there was controversy early on, but the science updates. And this is why you have to really follow the latest science and be very careful of some of these articles in uh, no-name journals. Like, Anyone can theoretically find a reason to cherry-pick studies and publish in a no-name journal. 
uh, honestly, there's been so much research fraud and research, you know, a controversy of selective uh, cherry picking that this kind of stuff happens all the time. It's also with industry study. Industry, whenever they do meta-analysis of, say, sugar or red meat, they always toss out the studies that does not appeal to the industry base. This happens all the time, and this is why you have to look at reputable journals, and you actually have to look at the reputable experts on yeah. this, not just any random analysis on yeah. the internet yeah. that is cloned yeah. on the NIH yeah. website. To totally get it. So, um, it, it I, what I, what we originally asked you to come on to the program about is this new festival variant they're calling it from this fifty-three thousand person event. And uh, now there's another variant, a new COVID variant that has been de detected in South Africa, apparently the most mutated so far. What is the state of things? Um, is there any risk, given that this is a SARS uh, virus, that it could at some point mutate to, to resemble the, the, the lethality, the, 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 the potential to kill of the original SARS virus that, as I recall, was around 50% fatal, or the MERS virus, the Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Syndrome virus, um, that is also a, a SARS virus that, that is, uh, as I recall, in the 20% range. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of my memory here. Right. Um, is right. that a concern that, that if we don't get the world vaccinated, that we'll, or, at, or at the very least the United States, we could be looking at something that becomes much more deadly? And, and what's the deal with the latest, these latest variations? Right. The, the new variants, uh, you know, these variants are still emerging. The festival variant, some people are saying, is a subtype of Delta. It's still Delta, but a subtype of Delta that they, uh, they're not necessarily worse than Delta. It's just that they could tell it came from the festival because it has that you know, unique subtype signature. Right. Um, mm -hmm. That basically they know it came from the same place because of the similarity. That one's not as worrying. It is Delta, and it was a, it was a super spreading event, but it's not as worrying as the South Africa's new C12 variant. That variant is the most mutated so far. Basically, of all the variants, this is the most genetically distant from Wuhan 1.0 strain. Uh, it has mutated the greatest distance. And it's mutated and arrived there by mutating at twice the rate of the average uh, variant that's out there. So it basically had a sudden jump in mutations. And we think it was because of some immunocompromised person that probably uh, led, gave the virus extra practice time to eventually evolve uh, to that state. But it means that basically there is this uh, acceleration of more and more variants that are jumping further and further away from the original strain. And all our vaccines, and if you were infected in early 2020, your immunity was adapted to the old Wuhan strain, which means likelihood of greater reinfection. There's also some signs that it could um, be uh, more infectious. Uh, there's lots of troubling mutations in, in that um, C12 variant, which doesn't even have a Greek name, but I expect it to have a WHO assigned Greek name very soon. But it just means that in, within a few years, um, it will evolve, the coronavirus will evolve to be so distant that our 1.0 Wuhan adapted spike protein vaccines may not work. And also that also implies your, your previous natural immunity as well. So we have to be very careful. But in terms of virulence, we don't know if it's going to be more virulent and severe per se. Delta, by the way, I want to point out, is already four to five times more severe than the original strain in terms of risk hospitalizations if you're vaccinated um, or even one dose vaccinated. Right. So this is really, really uh, already worrying. And if it's five times more, um, in terms of a way, if it's more and more too severe, like 20% or 50% mortality, it becomes um, almost too severe for it to keep spreading. As in, if it's... If it's killed, it becomes self-limiting then. If it's host too, too fast, it becomes... Uh, it it, it self-dies out too quickly. Right. So a moderately severe but highly infectious virus, which is what Delta is, is actually the most dangerous. Uh-huh. So we're, we're at... at uh, and and we, we have, uh, I believe, just about a minute here before we're going to hit a hard break. Um, 
Uh, how goes the work that you're seeing in the science uh, with regard to adapting the vaccines to these new viruses? And, you know, it, or, and or is this just going to be the new normal, what we have right now? Well, first of all, the, the research says that a third shot is very effective, very effective versus the second shot, especially if it's been more than uh, six months. Um, they're also adapting vaccines um, to Delta. Those are underway. Um, and also, by the way, a new study showed that uh, Moderna, um, because of the timing and the dosage, could actually be a little bit stronger than Pfizer vaccine, apples to apples against Delta. Uh, there's been two studies that show that it is stronger than Pfizer vaccine uh, in a head-to-head matchup. So uh, w- w- there's lots of things that could be seen. Uh, boosting right now is still a really great solution. Eventually, we will need Delta or other future variant adaptive vaccines, but those are always slower than getting another booster. Um, Hopefully, we can get out of this and by ventilating masks in addition to vaccines. Don't just rely on vaccines alone. Do all three mitigations. There you go. Wear your mask. Wear your damn mask. (laughs) Dr. Eric Feigelding on Twitter, D-R-E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G. Dr. Dr. Feigelding, thanks again for dropping by. Great talking with you. Yeah, you too.